Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dave. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at Wallace's integral. Wallace's integral is a very interesting integral. It is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x to the nth power with respect to x. It was named after John Wallace, who was an English mathematician. Wallace was a contemporary of Newton and Leibniz, and he made some considerable contributions to the fields of trigonometry, calculus, geometry, and the analysis of infinite series. He is also credited with introducing the infinity symbol to mathematics. In 1668, he, along with Christopher Wren, who was one of the most famous architects of his day, solved a problem proposed by the Royal Society concerning the collision of bodies, thereby introducing the concept of momentum to physics. In addition to a mathematician, he was also a theologian. He composed works on theology, logic, and English grammar, and he even worked as a cryptographer for the English government. So he was a man who was fairly well known in his own day. Enough with the history. Let's get back to the mathematics. I think that everybody who is watching this video is able to integrate something like sine cubed of x. In other words, when n is a relatively small number. In this case, we can integrate by saving a factor. That is to say, rather than writing sine cubed of x, we can write sine squared of x times sine of x. Owing to the Pythagorean identity, we can write our integral as 1 minus cosine squared of x times sine of x dx. We can then use this to carry out a u substitution, whereby u is equal to cosine of x, du is equal to negative sine x dx, u of 0 is equal to 1, and u of pi over 2 is equal to 0. Doing this substitution gives us negative 1 times the integral from u equals 1 to u equals 0 of 1 minus u squared du. Since my limits of integration were reversed, I can eliminate the negative sign by putting them in the proper order. Therefore, I'll have the integral from u equals 0 to u equals 1 of 1 minus u squared du. This is now a relatively easy proposition to compute the value of this definite integral. I get u minus u cubed over 3 evaluated at 1 and 0. This gives me 1 minus 1 third or 2 thirds. Keep this value in mind as we'll be coming back to it a little bit later. The problem with this kind of brute force approach is that for higher powers of sine of x, I would have to raise the term 1 minus u squared to higher powers. For example, if I had sine of x to the fifth power, this 1 minus u squared would have to be squared. I would then have to expand it and then evaluate more integrals. Needless to say, this isn't very practical. Therefore, we are going to seek a slightly more clever approach to this problem. We will let the integral of sine of x to the nth power be equal to i sub n. As we did before, we will try to save some powers. Only this time, we are going to remove a sine squared x to give us the integral of sine of x to the n minus 2 power times sine squared x dx. Again, we are going to use the Pythagorean identity and write this as the integral of sine of x to the n minus 2 power times 1 minus cosine squared of x. We will then distribute the sine of x to the n minus 2 power and we will split this up into two integrals. Therefore, i sub n will equal the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 
the sine of x to the n minus 2 power minus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x to the n minus 2 power times cosine squared x dx. Observing the first integral, we can realize that this is really nothing more than i sub n minus 2, and we will write it like this. At this point, the integral is basically defined as a recurrence relation. A recurrence relation is merely a sequence in which the current term i sub n is determined in terms of one or more previous terms. I think you ha may have seen recurrence relations in the form of the Fibonacci sequence, where the current number is simply the sum of the two previous numbers. Since this is a recurrence relation, it would be nice if we could do something to simplify this integral. And that's exactly what we are going to do right now. We are going to attempt this by integration by parts. We'll let u equal cosine of x, which means that du is equal to negative sine x dx. This leaves that dv is equal to sine of x to the n minus 2 power times the cosine of x dx. Now, we have to go and find v, so we'll get this by integrating. We will do this by a substitution. Since I've used u above as a variable, I'm going to use t to do my substitution. t will be sine of x, and dt will be cosine of x dx. This reduces to the simple integral t to the n minus 2 power dt. I can then use a power rule to integrate this, and I will get t to the n minus 1 power over n minus 1. When I substitute back in for t equals sine of x, I get sine of x to the n minus 1 power over n minus 1. Now that I have computed v, I can complete my integration by parts. Just as a reminder, the formula for integration by parts is given by uv minus the integral of v du. If I plug all of these things into the integration by parts formula, I get cosine of x times sine of x to the n minus 1 power over n minus 1, evaluated at pi over 2 and 0, minus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of negative sine x times sine of x to the n minus 1 power over n minus 1 with respect to x. Taking a closer look at the integral, I realize that I can combine the sine terms. I can also pull out a 1 over n minus 1. Lastly, the negatives will go away because the negative sine x and the minus sign outside the integral will cancel out. This will give me cosine of x times sine of x to the n minus 1 power over n minus 1 evaluated at pi over 2 and 0 plus 1 over n minus 1 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x to the nth power dx. This should look very familiar because the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x to the nth power dx is simply i sub n, as we see here. Now, the next concern is to take a look at how we evaluate cosine of x times sine of x to the n minus 1 power over n minus 1 at pi over 2 and 0. It turns out that because cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0 and sine of 0 is equal to 0, this will cancel out, leaving us with simply i sub n over n minus 1. This means that the entire integral is simply i sub n over n minus 1. Be now substituted back into the original formula for i sub n. 
when I do this, I get I sub n is equal to I sub n minus 2 minus 1 over n minus 1 I sub n. This implies that I sub n plus 1 over n minus 1 I sub n is equal to I sub n minus 2. After doing some algebraic substitutions, I can arrive at my final recursive formula for I sub n, namely I sub n is equal to n minus 1 over n times I sub n minus 2. As with any recursive formula, it's necessary to establish some base cases. In this case, we have two base cases, namely I sub 0 and I sub 1. If n equals 0, anything to the 0 power is simply 1. Therefore, I will integrate from 0 to pi over 2, 1 dx. It should be easy to see that the result of this integration is pi over 2. If n equals 1, I simply have the integral of 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x dx. This gives us negative cosine of x evaluated at pi over 2 and 0, which gives us a final value of 1. Therefore, I can now use my recursive formula to compute higher values of I sub n. For example, I sub 2 will be equal to I sub 0 times n minus 1 over n, which is pi over 2 times 1 half. I sub 4 will equal I sub 2 times n minus 1 over n, which is the previous product times 3 quarters. Similarly, for the odd values, I would get I sub 1 times n minus 1 over n, which is 2 thirds. And for n equals 5, or I sub 5, I get I sub 3 times n minus 1 over n, which is 2 thirds times 4 fifths. Now let's briefly verify these results. If I have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine squared x dx, I can use the power reduction formula. This gives me 1 half times the integral of 0 to pi over 2 of 1 minus cosine of 2x. And this will give me 1 half times x minus sine of 2x over 2, evaluated at pi over 2 and 0. This will give me 1 half times pi over 2 minus the sine of pi over 2, or pi over 4. So this checks out with our previous result. Also, earlier in the video, we showed that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine cubed of x dx is equal to 2 thirds. So this is working just fine for now. If we continue the pattern, we see that i sub 6 is equal to i sub 4 times n minus 1 over n, which multiplies the previous result by 5 sixths. For i sub 7, we merely multiply I sub 5 times 6 sevenths. At this point, it should be fairly easy to see the pattern. For even values of n, I sub n is equal to pi over 2 times the product of all of the odd numbers up to 2n minus 1 over the product of all of the even numbers up to n. For odd values of n, we have the product of all of the even numbers up to 2n minus 1 over the product of all the odd numbers from 3 to n. Once again, these results are displayed over here. Finally, for the sake of making this a little bit more compact, I'd like to introduce a new notation, namely the double factorial. The double factorial of n is denoted by n followed by two exclamation points, and it is simply the product of the integers 1 through n having the same parity as n. 
then we can write these results as follows. If n is even, i sub n is equal to pi over 2 times the double factorial of the quantity 2n minus 1 over the double factorial of the quantity 2 times n. If n happens to be odd, then i sub n is equal to the double factorial of the quantity 2 times n over the double factorial of the quantity 2n plus 1. So there we have it. These are Wallace's integrals. If you enjoyed my video, please subscribe and give me a like. Thank you very much.